It will forever be known as the day sports shut down. The NCAA has canceled its winter and spring app, championships. That includes March Madness and the finals. Come on, reach and pull and rub my leg the down. So it's straight to that watch your hair. Come back, back up again. They look at it. I learned about roaches. I learned about quick dumping on my life. Giant hornets. Murder hornets. Murder hornets. Murder hornets. Hurting wildfires. Firefighters are trying to get them under control. As it turns out, it was dangerous then. So I can't make it out by building. I found out that mayonnaise makes it smoother and less dry. Okay, look, I think it's safe to say that 2020 has been a rough year for everybody. I think we all could use some comfort food. Hello, ladies and gents. Welcome to my long-lasting quarantine project. <laughs> so since this is my first online video, let me introduce myself. My name is Eric. I'm a local culinary school teacher, and I was born and raised in New Jersey. I know my shirt says New York, but just ignore that. So having grown up around the New Jersey, New York area, I was surrounded by pizza everywhere. Needless to say, I ate a lot of pizza growing up. All the pizza out there is so good. It's phenomenal. It is by far the best pizza in the country. It wasn't until only years later, after I taught myself to cook, had worked in a couple of restaurants and bakeries, had I decided to try to recreate that. And I practiced a lot to the point where I think I have something that is really, really close. In fact, my girlfriend's probably sick and tired of having pizza. I love making pizzas, and what's really cool about the pizza dough is that you can take the same recipe and turn it into a bunch of different dishes, both sweet and savory. So today I'm gonna show you four different recipes that you can make using the same dough. Now, like I said, this is my first cooking video, so if it's a little rough around the edges, be gentle. But if you do like this video, Leave me a thumbs up, leave some feedback in the comments, and perhaps maybe subscribe if this is something that you might want to see more of. So thank you guys, and with that, let's go ahead and get started. So let's get started with the dough. So attach the dough hook to your mixer and add in 20.25 ounces of bread flour. Then add in 14 ounces of water, two ounces of olive or vegetable oil, and a tenth of an ounce of yeast. Then just mix that together on medium speed. Okay, so I know we just started with the dough, but here's an optional step you can take. So if you wanna make the pizzas as quick as possible, you can add in half an ounce of kosher salt right now and then just knead the dough together for five to six minutes. Now, if you wanna go for a slightly better texture, you can knead everything together, wait 30 minutes, and then add the kosher salt. This is called an auto lease. It does lead to a better texture and a slightly better flavor. It's completely up to you. Both ways lead to a great pizza. So for me, I'm going with option two what that looks like is I'm just kneading everything together, letting it rest for 30 minutes, and then adding in the kosher salt. Then I'm gonna knead the dough on medium high speed for about five to six minutes. Now when the time is almost up, here's what to look for in the dough as it's kneading. The dough should be slightly sticky, elastic, and just sticking to the bottom of the bowl. If the dough looks like this, where it's sticking to the sides of the bowl, just knead in a little bit more flour, just a little bit at a time until it's clearing the sides but sticking to the bottom of the bowl, and then you're done. From there, take the dough out of the bowl, sprinkle a little bit of flour over the top of the dough and the counter, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna press out the dough slightly with the palm of your hand, and then like a letter, you're going to fold the dough onto itself into thirds. Press down on the seams with each fold, and then you're going to fold the dough over in the opposite direction, and then tuck in the outside of the dough to form kind of a bit of a ball. You can sprinkle a little bit of flour here if it's starting to get really sticky and hard to work with, but try to avoid it if you can. From there, oil or spray a bowl or container and then set the dough inside. Oil or spray the top of the dough and then cover it up with either plastic wrap or a lid. Now you're going to bulk ferment this on the countertop for about two hours. This is what the dough looks like at the start of this and then this is two hours later. 
Yours may take more or less time depending on how warm your room is. It's ready to go when it's about doubled in size. After the dough has roughly doubled in size, lightly dust the counter with flour and take the dough out of the container. Lightly dust the top of the dough with more flour and degas the dough with your hand by pressing it out flat. Then take your bench scraper or a flat blade and cut the dough into three roughly even pieces. Now if you want to be exact you can do what I do and weigh out the pieces of dough and figure out what each piece needs to weigh. I like doing this because it keeps the pizzas consistent but that's up to you. Once I've added up the weight of the pieces I'm just going to divide the total weight by three to get my target weight for each piece. Then I'll simply cut off small chunks off of the larger pieces of dough and stick them onto the smaller ones until each piece is about the same size. Now, once that's done, I'm going to shape the pieces into individual balls of dough. To do this, the best way I can describe it is to think of this like there's a clock circling around the dough. What you're going to do is you're going to grab whatever section of dough is at the 12 o'clock area of the clock and fold that into the center of the dough and press. Then I'm going to continue and grab the section of dough that's at the one o'clock area and pull that into the center and press. Then roughly two o'clock and three o'clock and four and so on. And I'm going to do this by working all the way around the circle twice over to form a tight ball. Then to seal the bottom and form the dough for proofing, I'm going to roll the dough over onto its bottom and do a couple of tension pulls. So using my fingers, I'm going to pull the dough so that the bottom of the dough slightly sticks to the counter and the top of the dough starts to tighten. Then turn the dough slightly and repeat the pull again, pulling the dough across the counter slightly and using your hands to pinch and tuck the middle of the dough slightly underneath itself until the top part of the dough is smooth, tight, and very taut. Now, if the dough is slightly sticking to your hands a little too much, you can rub your palms on the counter to lightly flour them up to help you out, but try not to add too much flour here to the dough at this point. Now, when I have my dough piece formed and ready to go, I'm going to lightly grease a baking sheet lined with either a silicone baking mat or parchment paper and place my pizza dough on it to proof. Repeat that again until all your dough pieces are shaped and place them right onto the baking sheet. Now spray the top of the dough with oil and then cover with plastic wrap or in my case, since I didn't want to waste anything, some clean grocery store bags. Look, recycle and reuse, right? Okay, now that the dough is ready, here's another optional step you can take. If you want to make the pizzas as quick as possible, you can just put this at room temperature, let it proof for another hour and a half to two hours or until it's about doubled in size. Now, if you want to go for a better flavor and texture, you can park this in the fridge for a day or two to let it slowly ferment. I'm gonna go with that option because I got the time, but either way, I'll make a really good pizza. While we're waiting for that, let's prep our sauce and our cheese. Now, as far as the sauce, you can use any jarred sauce you like, but for a little bit of extra effort, you can make a really great red sauce with just a few steps. So go ahead in a medium sauce pot, pour in about a tablespoon of good extra virgin olive oil and one tablespoon of unsalted butter, and then turn the heat onto about medium low just to melt the butter. Now, optional step, if you wanna have your roommate's dog walk into your shot and stare deeply into your soul while you're trying to cook, go ahead. It makes the sauce so, so much better. So while they stand there and silently judge you, slice the ends off of three cloves of garlic, and then you're going to crush them with either the edge of your knife or a bench scraper like I'm using here. Then go ahead and use your knife to finely mince the garlic, and then add the garlic to the pot along with a three-fingered pinch of kosher salt, a pinch of red pepper flake, and one teaspoon of dried oregano. Then stir that together and cook for about four to five minutes on a very gentle heat until the garlic smells nice and fragrant, but there should be no browning or color whatsoever. So after the garlic oil is ready, you're going to pour in a 28 ounce can of whole tomatoes that's been lightly blended with either a stick blender, a food processor, or a regular blender. Peel and slice in half a whole medium sized yellow onion and add that to the pot along with about one teaspoon of sugar just to balance out all the acid that's in the tomatoes. So just stir that together, increase the heat to bring the sauce up to a simmer. From here on out, it's pretty simple. Just stir it every once in a while until the sauce is reduced and nice and thick to the way that you want it. Once an hour is up, stir the sauce and remove the onion. Taste the sauce one last time and adjust the seasoning depending on if you think it needs a little more salt or a bit of sugar just to balance out the sauce. Let it cool and cover it in your fridge for up to two weeks. 
Now, as far as what cheese you put on your pizza, you need to go with whole cheese. This is actually really important because any pre-shredded bag cheese is gonna have stuff in it that's gonna keep the cheese from melting, such as... These starches are meant to keep the cheese from clumping up in the bag. However, this starch will keep the cheese from melting evenly on a pizza and will affect its flavor and its texture. You may actually notice that the cheese will have a little bit of this powdery texture to it. So while I know it's some extra work, shred the cheese yourself. After you're done, cover it up and set it aside. You can do this a couple days in advance. Now this is it as far as prep. Whether you chose to proof the dough on the counter for two hours or overnight in the fridge, the dough should look like this. Expanded, grown, and about double in size. Now that we have our dough and everything prepped and ready to go, we're ready to cook. New York style pizza. To start this, you're gonna put your pizza stone onto the rack of your oven and set your oven anywhere from 500 to 525 degrees, depending on how hot your oven goes. You're then going to generously dust your counter with flour, place your dough down, and then dust the top of it with more flour. Now, what you're gonna do here while keeping your fingers curled backwards is you're gonna press around the center of the dough, work around the center of the dough, pressing more with the base and pads of your hands and fingers as opposed to your fingertips. So you're gonna work your way all around the dough. If there's any little air pockets that come up, don't worry, you can either just press that out or give it a nice satisfying little pop. Now, once it's as big as your hand, what you're going to do is, if you're right-handed, is you're gonna place your hand right onto the center of the dough. And then, using the base of your thumb, you're going to grab the dough and just pull it and stretch it just until you feel like the dough can't stretch any further. Like, if you pull any further, the dough is going to rip on you. When it gets to that point, you're going to flip the dough right onto your forearm. You're then going to flop the dough right back down so the dough will have made a 90 degree turn and you're going to repeat it again. So stretch until it can't go any further. Flip, place down. Stretch, flip, place down. Now, don't worry if you don't get the hang of it right away. After a bit of practice and doing it over and over again, you'll start to develop a sort of rhythm with it. Now, if you want to and you're confident enough, you can take your knuckles underneath the dough and stretch it by hand. So what you're gonna do here is you're going to take your fist and gently stretch the dough apart, then give the dough a quick toss to turn it, and kind of repeat that until the dough is about the thickness and size that you want. Now, you don't have to do this. You can just keep stretching and flipping the dough on the counter, but trust me, this is a little bit of fun. Once your dough is ready to go, you're gonna dust the peel all over with cornmeal. What the cornmeal does here, besides adding a little texture and flavor to the bottom of the dough, is it's going to kind of help the dough slide off the peel. If you've ever been in a driveway on your bike and there's a lot of rubble and you've slid over them, this is kind of the same idea here. Just you know, with a lot less concussions and bodily injury and visits to the hospital and... Okay, so now that the dough is ready, real quick thing about toppings. Just remember with a good pizza dough, you don't really need that many toppings. Less is more and don't be afraid to let the flavor of the dough stand out. That said, toppings are still important and try out whatever you want. Now to make the pizzas, ladle on the tomato sauce in the center of the pie and then spread the sauce out, leaving a bit of space on the edge for the crust. Sprinkle on the shredded mozzarella cheese all over and then place on your toppings. Now for this pizza, I'm gonna put on some pepperoni and then some small chunks of pineapple. Yes, you heard that right, pineapple. Yes, look, I know, listen. Before you judge me, this isn't my pizza. This pizza is for my girlfriend, so get mad at her, okay? Once the toppings are on the pizza, give the peel a little shake back and forth just to loosen the dough from the peel and check to make sure that the dough is sliding easily on the peel for when you load the pizza into the oven. From here, we're ready to bake. So to get the pizza dough from the peel to the oven, first shake the pizza loose onto the peel, then shake the pizza to the very edge then shake the pizza onto the stone and then slide the peel back. About nine to 12 minutes later, depending on your oven, your pizza should look like this. Slightly golden brown around the edges, caramelized and bubbly up top. Use your peel just to take a quick peek at the bottom of the pie to make sure it's golden brown underneath and then you can get it out of the oven. And there you go, a perfect New York style pizza. All that's left is to grate a little bit of Parmesan cheese over the top and then slice it and serve.
Nope. <laughs> Is it good? I love making this style of pizza and having the pizza stone really helps the crust develop great color and flavor. Now continue making as many pizzas as you'd like. Here I'm making a mushroom and yellow onion pie. And for my third pie, my personal favorite from Jersey, just a plain simple cheese pie. The topping options are endless, so make a lot of pizzas and enjoy trying out your creations. Now, of course, the only way to eat a proper slice of New York or New Jersey pizza is to fold it in half. It's like a law or something. And there you go. There's our New York style slice. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is part one of a two part series. If you'd like to continue watching and learn how to make more things with pizza dough, click on the link right here. We make a few other cool things like calzones, garlic knots, zeppelis, as well as how to make a delicious chocolate sauce. So if you'd like to see that, go ahead and click that link. And also click the subscribe button.